little duckling. Where's your, where's your mommy? Oh. oh, look at him go. And I just heard some thunder, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up here with my very sunny painting <laughs> compared to the clouds. And we're back inside, uh, seeing as uh, trying to do my uh, intro this morning was not going very well in all that rain. And I do apologize for the little bit of glare that I got going on on my glasses. Storm clouds are just still rolling through off the mountains. It is really dark outside and I don't have a professional, you know, setup here with my, my camera. As promised, it has been just over one week since I got back from the uh, 10th annual plein air convention and expo uh, held in Westminster just outside of Denver, Colorado. And I'm going to try as best I can to encapsulate and just, you know, everything that I experienced. Uh, as you know, um, there wasn't a lot of filming allowed actually during the conference. And uh, once again, that's understandable, but just thought it'd be kind of fun to, uh, for you to see reactions of someone who's never been to one of these before, had really no idea what to expect. I tried to multitask this morning on my morning walk that I've been trying to implement uh, as part of my you know, taking care of myself practice and uh, it rained cats and dogs. Um, just to let you know, if you're not from Colorado, this is totally not normal weather for us. And so now um, I'm doing a do-over and uh, starting again here in the studio and, and Skeeter's happy because, uh, you know, he, he hates it when I go out without him, but uh, he doesn't understand that, you know, he get all wet and cold. It's not meant for you, birdie. <laughs> So, um, how to begin to describe this trip? Well, let's, let's start at the very beginning. So, I have been a subscriber to Plein Air Magazine uh, and or just purchasing individual magazines on and off for over 10 years, I think since it actually started. And uh, it's a fantastic publication. It really, you know, gives you an idea of the length and breadth of the plein air movement that's been going on. Basically, a lot of people are getting outside, which is good. And as anyone will tell you, the best way to improve your art really is to paint from life. And if you live in Colorado, like me, there really is no excuse <laughs> for lack of subject matter because it's so gorgeous here. Uh, but sometimes it's, you know, it's good to be reminded of that. And I, I really was by going to this event. You know, places I take for granted that are just absolutely otherworldly and stunning to others who aren't used to it. So I had been vaguely aware of the conventions that they'd started up literally 10 years ago. It was always something else going on or I didn't have the funds at the moment. But when I found out that it was being held in Colorado in 2020, I jumped on the chance only to have it canceled because of COVID. And they did a fabulous job of, you know, refunding everyone and trying to make nice on that. And, and a lot of people went to the one they held in Santa Fe, but because I have really crummy lungs, health has not been the best. As you know, I caught COVID twice. But when I found out they were holding it in Colorado again, I jumped at the chance, signed in as soon as I could. But it was so popular that it had already run out of uh, places at the Westin Hotel where they were holding it. So I went to one of the satellite hotels where they'd also reserved some spots. But it was close, but not as close as I would have liked. And just, you know, for people who are looking ahead, uh, if you can, get to the main hotel if there's any way possible. Because even that little bit of a trek, one and a half, two miles or whatever, you know, it, it made it a little bit extra thing that I had to do every morning and cross across the highway and get there. And if I hadn't had my own car, 
could have been a little tricky. So I packed all my things. And of course I overpacked as I tend to do with these things. <laughs> you really don't need to bring your entire art studio, just to let you know. Okay, here's everything I'm taking down with me. <laughs> just a few things. tell that I'm going away for just a week now, could you? It's like an expedition. I got down there and, uh, and of course it was very hazy because of the Canadian wildfires and I was kind of feeling bad for people who'd come all this way from literally around the world only to see the Rockies were completely enshrouded in the wildfire haze. Thankfully, it did clear up, you know, mostly by the last day of the conference. But, you know, in addition to the rain and other things, I mean, that's part and parcel for painting outside. You never know what you're going to get. But my main problem was I was taking I-25, which is our main highway artery all the way. Yes, you were just, Skeeter is really having fun telling the story along with me, so bear with me. He's a little squawkier than usual. I think it's the rain. I took I-25 down. Normally, if you're a fast driver and there's no traffic, it takes, you know, about an hour to get down. It took me over two hours to get down to the conference center. Um, a phone computer rerouted me all over, you know, the back roads to get down to where I was going. And so I was super late when I showed up. And so I missed the very critical you know, meet a friend activity that they had there. So once again, another tip, if you're able to make it early, make sure you can do so because it's very important to, you know, get to meet people and do things before all of the, the, the machinery starts running because once it starts going, it just goes, 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 goes. And you really, you, you can have, you know, some time to make friends with people if you're at the main hotel, but if you're like me commuting back and forth and just, you know, on a really tight schedule, it, it was really hard to get to know a lot of new people, although I definitely tried. And uh, the Hyatt place, which was one of the two or three other satellite hotels that they had for this event, it was wonderful. It was a beautiful hotel, very clean and spacious. I got upgraded to a room that had two beds instead of uh, the one. The only caveat I really had was it didn't have a bathtub, you know, and most people these days apparently shower. And I'm one of the weird holdouts that still likes a nice old fashioned bath. And because I was running late, I scurried over to the main event center, got, you know, dropped off all my bags, got in there and put on a name tag on me. And, you know, I didn't even get a chance to get my swag bag, which I'll show you later. But I got in there, you know, things were already moving along. We had C.W. Mundy and, you know, his band, and they were finishing up a set of music. And then in walked the man himself, Eric Rhodes, who's been running this for, you know, a very long time. And he was wearing a birthday suit. You know, not that kind of birthday suit, but an actual suit with, you know, party balloons and stuff like that. And that kind of gave us an inkling of what was about to happen happen but for those of us who've never been to one of these events before it was a spectacle because the theme was you know a birthday party because it was the 10th anniversary he pulled out all the stops they had a clown who did juggling you know he himself did some juggling <laughs> Uh, they had a full gospel choir because it was Sunday. And at this point, some of the newcomers like me, we kind of looked at each other like, is this normal? But you could tell that the people who had been to this event before, yeah, they're like, oh yeah, this is what we do. And they all started dancing and grooving and, you know, and some of us got into it and some of the more introverted introverts kind of slowly edged towards the door. <laughs> But you know, you roll with it. They had prizes, and that's another tip I would give someone. If you go to one of these events, don't blow off the stuff on the stage. If they invite people up or call for volunteers, you know, definitely call for it because they played musical chairs right off the bat. And of course, everyone's like, I don't wanna go up there and you know, play musical chairs. But you know what? The people who went up, they actually got some wonderful prizes. And uh, I'm not gonna give all those away because you know maybe they'll do it again, but it was mind blowing, like the things that were being given away. <laughs> They gave, you know, and then they gave their Lifetime Achievement Awards to C.W. Mundy, who's you know very well known for his work with Sports Illustrated, and then later on his plein air and gallery work. And then we had Jane Seymour, whom I knew, interestingly enough, from watching Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, when I was in Russia uh, years ago, uh, when after the you know the immediate fall of the Soviet Union, that was one of the first big Western shows that they got. Uh, from the U.S. and so anywhere I went, Colorado, Dr. Queen, <laughs> and they were very excited about this. So uh, I got to watch quite a few episodes of that show uh, dubbed in Russian while I was uh, studying over there. It was very exciting uh, to see her uh, receive her award. She has done a lot of work uh, promoting 
um, the arts and uh, her own charity that she has. And it was really cool, you know, to see her in person. I didn't get to personally speak with her because there were just so many people and so many other events going on. But it was, it was kind of neat to, you know, have a little bit of celebrity going on there in addition to the art celebrities that we had. Then portrait artist and, you know, painter extraordinaire Michelle Dunaway, she uh, finished up a painting that she had been working on of Jane Seymour uh, right there on the stage. And that was kind of cool to, you know, to hear her thought process and, you know, how they talk back and forth because they have a history. They, they've known each other for quite some time. Uh, by this point, though, I mean, I was really into it, but I was getting kind of dizzy and woozy because I hadn't had lunch and I certainly hadn't had dinner. And uh, so I was on fumes at this point. So finally, when we got let us out, it was kind of a relief to realize that the expo hall was uh, still open, even though it was quite late and they had snacks and they were good snacks. And unfortunately, I didn't film any of it because I was just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, but it was a veritable Aladdin's cave of uh, stuff. <laughs> In addition to what we already got in our grab bag or um, that they gave us, let me let me show you just a few things that I got in the bag. I guess you know most of the people who've been to these events knew this, knew about the bag, but for whatever reason, it was a surprise to me. So it was kind of nice, um, you know, to be given a backpack with the patch. I don't know if you can see that on there. Just as a note, I don't know if everybody got the same things and I don't know if they put this much stuff in every bag or even if it's a different thing each time because this was my first time, I didn't know what to expect. So let's see. Um, these are some of the bags of things that I bought for myself from Winnie Newton and Daniel Smith and some of my other favorite vendors. The whole event, uh, you know, is backed by Streamline Publishing. It shouldn't be a surprise that we got a lot of magazines. Plein Air magazine, magazine. We've got Fine Art Connoisseur, and there's another Plein Air magazine, a welcome magazine for Golden, Colorado, another Plein Air <laughs> magazine of you know ads and coupons for vendors, a sticker from Emily Olson Art. We're very sweet. Lots of stuff from art galleries, instructor uh, information. We've got a pennant. <laughs> Got a DVD, so I'll have to look into that. Uh, samples of oil paint from Winnie Newton. More oil paints, more paper samples. Sample brush. <laughs> Three different tubes of oil paint. Um, a travel towel. Pocket guides and things like, uh, for people who are just starting out and learning their values. Like Jane Hunt had this really cool little you know handout that she put in, and then uh, Karen Ann Hitch. She also had a, a value finder card, so you could you know, figure out what your values are as you're working, which is really nice. Calls for entry for different shows and different festivals. And last but not least, got a nice little patch. So I didn't go through and show every single item or we would have been here for an hour. And I know you guys just want to get an idea, but it was a nice surprise. I, especially for the people who didn't bring backpacks, maybe that was their first, you know, time painting outside and they weren't sure if they were going to do it. And they're like, ah, I didn't pack the backpack, but now they have a backpack. And uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, by the end of the first day, I, w I was just overwhelmed is the, the word, I think, for the evening. Uh, but it's really late and uh, hopefully I'll tell you more about it tomorrow morning. So I try to get some sleep, but it's hard because as a lot of you know, I am an inveterate insomniac. Um, I'm getting better about it uh, with my morning walks and change of diet, uh, but I really didn't get to sleep much, hardly the entire time I was there. And you can you can just see it in my face that I'm like, I'm having a great time, but I'm just like, meh. So day two, I was operating on about four hours of sleep. And so I was just like getting up and I looked around and I couldn't find any towels in the bathroom and I was freaking out. Somehow they've overlooked them. So then I called the front desk and I said, excuse me, um, I think you guys forgot to bring up towels to my room. And the guy was like, that's weird. We always bring towels to the room. I'm like, well, I looked and I didn't find them. And then this happened. Okay, so I'm an idiot. I thought the towels would be under the sink here. Does it look Looks like that's where towels would go. Oh look, they're inside the shower. So then I was running behind, you know, because it took me a while to get, you know, my shower and everything. And I went down to the breakfast bar and it's a very nice breakfast bar. And I, you know, I had breakfast. I met two very lovely uh, artists while I was there. And, uh, but then this was my reaction after I got back to my room to get ready to head over. 
and I was they were just very polite and they wanted to see my artwork and I showed them and I didn't get to see theirs yet and then I looked them up and it was like Yeah, I'm a little living over my head. <laughs> and uh, so I got to the main hall and um, they actually, for a fee, uh, you can actually bring in your uh, professional art that's already framed and ready to go. And it's kind of like an impromptu art show. So all the people who are going to the West in there or elsewhere or at the show uh, can look at your work and purchase it. And there was also work by the instructors there, uh, which was really cool to see. And even though they weren't spending the night in the hotel, I did run into some of the artists I knew locally from Colorado from our uh, Plein Air Artists of Colorado group or PAC. And uh, so that was cool to run into them. And some of them were even volunteers, which is cool. And Colorado watercolorist Buffalo Kopinski was up first to bat for the first session of the day. And so I went over to that. And now I'm heading over to the watercolor stage. And the theme of the conference is birthdays. Okay, we're gonna stop filming now. Shh. And uh, he's known for doing these really intricate, beautifully colored uh, watercolor pieces. And uh, so I was really curious to get, a, you know, to get an idea of how he put those together. And then after that session, we went directly into the next watercolor session. Vladislav Yelisiev, who was from the Soviet Union, he's been in the U.S. for well over 30 years. But he was an absolute delight to learn from, uh, very energetic and used his hands a lot, as people from that part of the world tend to do. I had to edit out some squawks from Skater. You are being very chatty today. He likes being my co-host, uh, but right now I'm gonna, so I can keep my thoughts clear, I'm gonna put you over here and you can watch, okay? Good boy. All right, I'll, I'll put you back on my shoulder in a minute, all right? Just, just chill for a bit, okay. Now to keep with the theme of doing water media, I had to go and see Elvara Castagnet, although some people call him Castagnet. Uh, either way, he is you know, a big name in the watercolor world, and so I was really curious to see what he would do. And surprisingly, it was an indoor scene in a cafe, but it was still a lot of things that could be applied to you know, any situation out of doors. And uh, it was really fun to watch him go from not you know, knowing what it was going to be and how, where he was going to the final product. And at the end, it was really sweet because uh, he actually gave the painting to Eric. But after that, it was time to head to the buses. And so I you know, quickly ate something as fast as I could, got into the bus and uh, headed out to Golden, Colorado, which used to be, uh, for a very brief number of years, uh, the capital of Colorado before Denver. There's a bit of trivia for you. And uh, we all just kind of emerged from the three buses and already there were tons and tons of, you know, several hundred artists that were already there painting, you know, they got their spot and they were going to work. I don't know if any of you remember that big, you know, flash mob trend that was a thing, you know, 10, 15 years ago where people just randomly showed up and started doing something. Well, it kind of felt like that. Uh, everywhere you looked, there was just artists, artists, artists. So you can see my reaction that I'm just like, whoa. I have never seen so many plein air artists in one place in my entire life. And even though I've been painting plein air for you know, a number of years, it was it was overwhelming just because, the, you know, A, it was a new place. B, there was just so many people around and, you know, taken some of the spots that I probably would have taken. And uh, so in desperation, I found something familiar, a chicken coop. I can paint chickens, I told myself. 
<laughs> and so I set myself down and just went at it. And, uh, and of course, I only had, you know, about 45 minutes uh, because I'd taken so long wandering around and, you know, the bus didn't get there super early anyway. So I did the best I could and then the time here and we have to be done in just like a few minutes. So <sighs> I wish I had more time for my chickens. Yeah, I threw on some shadows real quick and called it good. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one painting chickens. Amanda and uh, Chula were also there and uh, you know, we were all painting the chickens. So it was like the chicken club and <laughs> it was a lot of fun, even though the chickens didn't always cooperate. Uh, so you know, we got onto the bus and uh, you know, got to see the bucolic and beautiful houses of golden go by. And, and by this point, I was completely knackered. Well, I think that ends day two. I think I'm going to go to my hotel room and just kind of chill. I'm a bit tired. So that sums up the first part of uh, my adventures at the plein air convention. Um, I've had some other painting adventures since then, but once again, I want to get this done as soon as possible, but I'm realizing that it's not probably going to happen all at once. I'm going to break it down into probably a couple more segments uh, so I can actually take the time and explain things the way I'd like. And uh, you know how I got Skeeter to be quiet and calm down? Check this out. He's in his happy place. Yeah. If you have been to one of these things, I would love to hear from you. I would like to hear how it measured up to ones you've been to in the past or, you know, was there something cool or new that, you know, they did this year that you haven't seen before. And if this was your first time like me, you know, it'd be fun to compare notes too to see what you thought. This is why I love the internet because you can actually interact with people even though you're, you know, we're all now home and spread to the far corners of the earth. Uh, but thanks so much again for watching and you have an awesome rest of your week.